Well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome uh, to this lecture on the tree of life, um, a both and organism. And I want to just briefly um, share about um, how the tree of life can help us um, set a theological uh, kind of underpinning um, for understanding the blended ecology of church, uh, if you will. And so our story as human beings uh, starts at a garden uh, around a tree of life. It um, starts again at a tree of life, and it continues on uh, indefinitely, internally, at the tree of life. Um, that first garden, we're there with God, walking with God in the cool of the day. Uh, human beings made in the image of God and called very good. Um, there we have this garden scenario where we have access to the tree of life. There's just one restriction in that garden. Uh, don't eat of this other tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And what do human beings do? We do that. Uh, and uh, in being sin, this, this virus of sin kind of comes into the, the human story. Uh, this original trauma that now we're all carrying uh, and we've been um, misshaped uh, and infected uh, by sin, and the whole cosmos has been affected by that. And so God restarts creation at a tree. This time it's a, the tree in the shape of a cross uh, where the Son of God hangs um, uh, uh, and gives his life uh, for the redemption and healing of humanity and of the universe. And somehow on that, that tree, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the unbroken fellowship of the Trinity are co-suffering in this moment and kind of taking on all the brokenness of humanity uh, uh, in the body of Jesus and breaking the power of that and unleashing uh, the power of new creation and new life in the world. And then that tree gets us back uh, to the tree that should be familiar. It's a tree we've seen before because our story begins in that garden and it concludes in an urban garden scenario now. There's a city that comes down, the temple from God, and uh, God makes his dwelling among humanity in a physical, embodied way. The universe itself is healed. Um, and there we are again at that tree of life, uh, the one that we lost access to uh, when we rebelled and got expelled from the garden. Now we're back in the garden, uh, and there we are at the tree of life again. Um, and so... Really, the human story is this journey between the trees, right? And we're getting back to that final tree. But what I find really compelling is uh, it's a tree that Paul gives us uh, one of the great metaphors for the church uh, that Paul tells us that the the, the community of God, the church, is like a, a olive tree. Um, and he uses this uh, imagery. He kind of mixes his metaphors as Paul's kind of notorious for doing and he starts talking about um, if part of the dough offered uh, uh, as the first fruits is holy, it makes the whole batch holy. So a portion of a thing makes the whole thing holy. And what this tree is rooted in uh, makes the whole organism holy, right? Um, and the tree in this time of liminality and transition, that uh, the community is like a tree of deep roots uh, grounded and rooted uh, through Messiah Jesus and the matriarchs and the patriarchs in the Torah, um, that that through the tree that's rooted in that, uh, we we have this community, this living organism, and branches are being broken off of that tree. Branches are falling off that tree, dying and falling off, if you will. And there's these new branches that are being grafted in uh, these wild branches. So the church is an organism of deep roots, wild branches, right? Um, and so what, what that means in Paul's day is so you have like Jerusalem church, Antioch church, uh, you have this really centered, um, kind of really grounded in traditions, uh, really kind of, uh, this very pronounced, um, Hebrew way of being the church in Jerusalem. Then you got this Gentile com community out here in Antioch looking very strange and very weird. And so Jerusalem's getting reports back about what's happening in Antioch. Uh, and that the circumcision is not being followed by the Gentiles in, in uh, Antioch. So they come together in Jerusalem in Acts 15. They have this big meeting, and they say, how are we going to do this? What The Gentile church, it looks really different. 
um, and and um, so they they make uh, the decision after prayer, and Peter speaks, and Paul gives a report, and then James kind of makes the ultimate call um, that we're going to allow the Church of Antioch to look like the Church of Antioch. There's some continuity there with the church in Jerusalem, but there's also a contextuality, and there's this kind of both and dance of continuity with the church uh, that's rooted in Jesus, right? Uh, and uh, there's contextuality where the church looks like in Antioch, very different than that church in Jerusalem. And those two things are living together as a both and organism. And so this image is really helpful when you think about the church, that sometimes different aspects of the church are going to look like that really rooted, um, uh, um, uh, grounded in tradition kind of way of being church. Other times there's going to be these kind of really wild branches springing up, these really fruitful, creative kind of iterations of the church, and those things can live together. Uh, one of the times I had an opportunity to visit Israel, and there are olive trees in the Garden of Gethsemane, and we believe this is where Jesus actually uh, uh, sweat blood the night before and prayed before he went to the cross the next day. Um, and these trees that are in the garden, some of these trees are reported to be 2,000 years old. They've done carbon dating and such on these. Some of these trees are really, really ancient. So to think about the, the fact that Jesus maybe touched one of these trees, right? That's pretty amazing um, that maybe we could touch something. Um, but if you look closely at the tree, you'll see that it's a, it's a both-end organism. So the tree, it's survived for 2,000 years, not by just staying the same the whole time, but there are these little shoots that are constantly kind of springing out and emerging out of the root ball, all one organism, but built into the organism is this kind of this multiplication thing with wild branches kind of shooting up out of it. And this is literally the image that Paul gives us for the church, right? And, and what if the church is this both and image, um, uh, the, the symbolism of the tree, the, the simeon, the semiotics of the tree from garden to garden and cross, uh, and, and now is embodied in the church, right? Um, that it's this both and deep roots, wild branches, blended ecology kind of way. Um, and so when we talk about a mixed ecology ecosystem, uh, which is the language that we have inherited from the United Kingdom around fresh expressions, um, I've tried to advocate for the language of blended ecology uh, as these organisms kind of live together over time. They're not just mixed together, but they actually blend and transform each other uh, in, in kind of like our, DN, our, our, uh, our DNA gets transferred from one organism to the next. So that's happening in churches where you have the inherited forms of church, the traditional forms of church. Church, when you know people look at that, they go, yep, that's church. Uh, and then these really fresh expressions of church uh, in the mission-shaped church report gives us that language of fresh expressions and uh, mixed economy. Uh, but when those things are living together, um, that's the blended ecology. And this could happen over a whole region. Uh, it can happen over an entire conference. It can happen over uh, entire parishes um, and, and really over the whole world. And this is a faithful way that the church has been the church going all the way back to that Jerusalem, Antioch, uh, Romans 11 kind of situation, Acts 15 situation, uh, deep roots, wild branches. So I think there's really three keys to cultivating this blended ecology or living in a healthy way uh, where you have symbiosis and not just things living together, but a mutual symbiotic relationship where healing and new life is kind of springing forth. And the first thing is cultivating the existing thing. Uh, Jesus gives us this wonderful um, parable story uh, about a tree and Luke uh, bearing, uh, not bearing fruit, right? And so the, the field tender comes along, the owner of the field, he says, hey, tear that thing out of there, throw it away. It's not bearing fruit. It's just wasting up the soil. And Jesus says, you know, give me three years with it. Let me cultivate it. Let me prune it and trim it and fertilize it. And let's see if it bears fruit. And that's a great image for what has to happen in many of our churches today. There needs to be some pruning and some trimming and some fertilizing, things that have been in the soil for a long time, but maybe haven't been bearing fruit. We need to be about cultivating those things so that they bear fruit again. Then there's the seeding aspect. Now, this is where the fresh expressions come in. So that cultivating is more about the existing thing and helping that thrive in new ways. The seeding thing is about, think of Jesus' parable of the reckless sower. That's why I like to refer to it. So he's a reckless sower. 
uh, who's just throwing seed all over the place, right? Seed going in the rocky places, seed going in the thorns, seed going in the uh, uh, the good soil. And anybody who's there from the cedars union that day, right? They're saying, no, this is a terrible parable. You can't just throw seed everywhere, good expensive seed. You got to cultivate the seed, put it in nice, neat little rows and fertilize it and make sure the soil is good. And then you put the seed there. You know, they're going to give Jesus a fine for a terrible story. He's going to be arrested by the Cedars Union. Uh, but Jesus says, no, a the God is like a reckless sower, throwing the gospel out everywhere. Seed flying everywhere, profusely all over the place. And some seed gets in good soil, some seed not so much. And and that's the parables, you know, about the condition of people's hearts receiving the gospel, right? But think about how in Fresh Expression of Church, we're just seeding a bunch of stuff. We're just experimenting. We're trying new forms of church. Some of them is going to work. Some of them is not going to work. We're just sharing the gospel everywhere in every context and every nook and cranny of life. And so that's part of the blended ecology. There's both and way of being church. And then there's grafting. So the first time I heard about this plant, it like blew me away. It's called ketchup and fries, y'all. Uh, and you can you can grow your ketchup and your French fries on the same plant. Isn't this amazing? Um, that through the miracle of grafting, so this plant will grow potatoes in the ground, tomatoes up top. So as we're um, cultivating the existing thing and helping that grow, and we're seeding the new things, how do we help those things live together and graft those together? Using Paul's imagery from Romans 11. We're grafting together the new, the fresh, the uh, the vintage, uh, the traditional, and they're living together. So every church on the new missional frontier, we can't just pick one or the other. We can't just do all the seeding, throwing stuff, doing everything everywhere. We can't just do only growing potatoes in the ground. We have to graft these things together so that every church can become this kind of hybrid organism where it's growing potatoes in the ground, little colorful tomatoes up top. And that, friends, is the blended ecology. That's the the both and way uh, of being the church in the 21st century. It's not dismissing one and choosing one over the other. It's in every local setting we're doing both of those things together and empowering the whole people of God to do that. And I thought, you know, this image of grafting is and such, it makes me think of another tree, right? So I'm going to end where we started. The other tree that, that this should make us think about is that tree of life right? The tree of life that we first encounter in, in the beginning of our story, that tree of life we'll, we'll spend together in all eternity. So there's a professor out of Syracuse University, Sam Van Aken, who does these uh, 40 fruit trees. And he'll graft together um, all these different 40 fruits onto a single tree through the miracle of grafting. Now that's that's amazing, right? That's just incredible. Um, and and um all these different fruits living together on the same tree. Now, when I think about Revelation, we see we're back at the tree of life and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations, right? So this this beautiful image that, that we still have our, our ethnic, our national, our tribal identities kind of, but we come to that tree and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. And there's the fulfillment of everything Isaiah said, right, about uh, beating our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning with hooks and not making war anymore. Uh, there's the physical embodiment of God's kingdom in the cosmos in a fresh way. There's the the wolf and the the lamb, the lion and the lamb, uh, the wolf and lamb lying down together and the, the lion eating uh, straw uh, like the ox and everything that we know, all the realities of sin have been stripped out. But then it says the one thing about the tree is the tree, the fruit of the tree is different every month. Um, so the fruit of the tree uh, is bearing fruit that's different uh, uh, each month. And so one of the exciting things about this is that we'll eat in the new creation, right? I'm excited about still being able to eat in my embodied, physical, in our resurrected selves, right? Bad news is we'll probably all be fruititarians because we won't be killing stuff and animals won't be killing each other and all that. But I'm sure we'll do some really creative things with pies, right, with these fruits. But the tree of life has all these different fruits growing on the same tree. It's a beautiful image, right? Um, well, what if our churches can look like uh, that tree now? What, what if our churches can look like the tree of life now? Where we're rooted in our context and our soils. We're rooted in our traditions. We're rooted in our, our theological distinctions. Um, but also 
We've got all these little colorful little expressions of church happening in dog park church and din dinner church and burritos and Bibles and in the tattoo parlor and at the EV charging station and in the state rehab and in the basically anywhere human beings can gather uh, in those fresh expressions. We employ a minimal ecclesiology uh, that Jesus gave us when he said, where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. And where two or more human beings are gathered in the name of Jesus and Jesus is in the midst. Guess what that's called? The church, right? And, and so these little churches can be springing up all over the place, these little communities rooted together uh, in, in, in the inherited communities and giving life to each other in this beautiful kind of ecology of church. So I hope this lecture kind of sets a theological vision for what we're going to be talking about with deep roots, wild branches, in this both and way of uh, being church. Um, so thank you so much for tuning into the lecture today, uh, and may God bless you.